something, right? Your dad called you today and said, I want to buy a house. What's the first thing you would ask them? The biggest question I've been getting lately from brokerages and agents all over the world is how to handle objections. It's been like a trending question in my DMs and on my Zoom calls and everything else. So I thought I would kind of come on and, and do this publicly, kind of share with you guys my thoughts on objections and this entire process here of conversion, right? Because that's what this is. That's what you're trying to do at the end of the day. You're trying to convert uh, into a deal. You're trying to take this prospect and, and turn it into a transaction today. And so let me just start there because there within lies, I believe the biggest problem in the industry right this second when it comes to conversion is this, that agents, um, most agents are looking at every single prospect as a possible deal today. And so what I mean by that is when an agent is talking to a prospect, maybe they were an online lead or maybe it was a, it was a cold call or whatever, they, whatever it was. And they say something like, you know, I'm kind of worried about interest rates right now. Kind of, you know, kind of objection. Let's go with that for a second, since that seems to be one of the hot topics um, that that agent is literally trying to rack their brain on how what to say to turn that conversation around and get it head get that situation headed towards a contract get it towards a possible transaction and i think the first thing to realize is that most prospects are not a deal today i think that's the first step because if you're just if you're just laser focused on you know, every prospect is a deal. And, and the way that you communicate is only to turn these prospects into deals today. You're losing so much future business. And let me, I'm here to tell you guys that you're here to build a career. You're not here to close this deal today. Like you can build, you can, you can work your business like that. But that's not how I work my business. What the way I think is, okay, you know, I'm not thinking how many deals can I close this year? I'm thinking, how many deals can I close in 30 years? That's what I really want to do. Now, when I focus that mentality in my business and communication, what happens is absolutely magical. I get the business later, of course, because I built those relationships. But guess what? I also close even more deals now than I would if I were just focusing on deals today. Why? Because when I'm just focused on deals today, people see that, they know that, they hear that, they recognize that, and a lot of people are turned off by that. They're going to go the opposite direction. Now, you can be a very slick salesperson type and so, you know get around this to a degree, but I still don't believe that that's the best route to go without really thinking long term with it. I, I Let's just put it like this. I The way that I, I eventually started building my business allowed me to close so many deals this year. But not only that, I could visualize how many deals I was going to close over the course of my career. Um, and I mean, I mean, actually, let me show you real quick. Um, you know, just for proof, right? For If this is your first time watching me on YouTube or whatever, this is an actual screenshot out of my MLS that shows me at the top out of all agents in my county for eight years in a row. This is dates going from January 2014 to December 2021. Okay, And I got in the business in 2002. So this was after a while in the business, of course, but I had to go through all of those learning experiences. And I actually built my business handling objections and trying to close the deal for the first uh, uh, eight years of my career. And guess what? I lost everything. I went bankrupt. I was homeless. I was sleeping in my car because I was high pressuring people. And now, right after that, I realized I need to accumulate people so that I can not just close deals this year, but I can close deals every year forever. That's what I want. That's what I want for you. And that's the dream I want to sell you today. Not the, you can close a hundred deals a year dream, but that you can close 3,000 deals over the course of the next 30 years. Um, that's what I, that's the dream I want to sell you. And, and it's totally possible. Anybody can do this. So let's get back on track here with the video in terms of handling objections. 
Um, now, my definition, uh, what, or let's just say the what agents, you know, traditionally, what most agents define an objection or even a rejection as, I define that as my prospect telling me what they want to do. For example, if they're telling me, hey, I'm worried about interest rates. That's me. That's them in so many words saying, I don't want to buy right now. I want to see what interest rates do. Now, I'm going to dig deeper into that conversation as if they're my mom or dad or brother. And I'm going to say, hey, what, what about interest rates? What's going on there? You know, what are your thoughts? What have you been hearing? You know, what's scaring you? What do you want to do? What do you plan on doing? Are you are you planning on waiting till rates get better? You know, what kind of property are you looking at? I want to know everything. So it's not an objection. It's them tell me what they want to do. If they say, I, you know, call me back in six months and, I'll, and I'll, I'm, I'm going to sell, I'm gonna, you know, I might sell in six months or I will sell in six months. Okay, great. What's going on in six months? That's got you wanting to sell. And I want to understand that situation because I want to, I want to understand, is he just blowing smoke? Is he or she uh, serious? Is it legit? Is what they have going on in six months legit to um, you know to buying or selling a property? I want to understand. I think the problem most agents make is, okay, you want to sell in six months? Great, I'll call you then, or something like something along those lines where they just kind of leave it open ended. I'll call you then, and they're not even digging into why they want to sell in six months, what they want to do, how they want to do it, any of that stuff. And it leaves it it leaves it to a point of when the agent tries to call the the prospect back in six months, they ghost them. Because they had no intentions of selling in six months. They had full intentions of never talking to that agent ever again. And if I can tell you, Mr. Agent, that I'm going to sell in six months, I know that'll get all, get you off the phone because it's gotten so many other agents off the phone. So I'm going to use the same trick on you and I'm never going to answer your phone again. That's what they're saying in so, so many words a lot of times. But if then you start digging deeper into it. And as you start asking why they want to sell in six months and what's going on in six months, and you start, they, they finally tell you, well, I don't really think I'm, we're going to say, you know, they finally tell you the truth. And now you've actually got a connection and they feel a little more connected because you actually went there with them. And now you have a full understanding of what's going on. They have no intentions of doing anything, or maybe their intentions are extremely low. And you say, oh, okay, great. Listen, it doesn't matter to me if you do anything and say, I don't care what you do. I'm just here to help you when you do decide to do something, whether it's a year, whether it's two years, whether it's 10 years. That doesn't matter to me. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to help you whenever you decide. Because we know on the back end, guys, why this strategy works so well is because on the back end, we know closings happen every day. And if we're doing our job to talk to as many people as we can on our market, then we're going to close a lot of these deals. It's just, just the way it works. If you're not talking to people, then you're not going to close deals. So that's why I say phone calls in the morning, social media in the afternoon. Phone call, social, phone call, social, phone call, social. Do a little dance, you know, phone call, social, phone call, social, you know, throw it out there, <laughs> you know, what can I do to help you, bro? You know, so it's funny because I pretty much had one question on my mind, actually, and that was so right now I'm currently in the process of like trying to kind of get appointments with leads. Like for example, I've been doing a lot of open houses. I was actually doing a lot of door knocking these last few weeks as well. Cause I just found it like really like kind of therapeutic, you know, and really just trying to get in front of people. So I was, I was looking up all your scripts, you know what I mean? Just like watching all those videos and whatnot. And like, and it's just like, you really been helping me you know? So thank you for that. But like mainly the thing is, it's like, you know, like I've been really like getting those contacts and just building up like, you know, like communication. But I found that like, you know, when it comes to actually trying to schedule appointments with these clients, it, it, it's almost like, you know, I think I'm not being direct enough. Like I'm kind of like leaving, like saying open ended things like, oh, you know, I just say this property, feel free to ask me any questions or feel free to, you know, let me know if you want to schedule an appointment as opposed to saying like, hey, you know, like when, when you want to go see this, you know what I mean? Like obviously so I don't want to be too pushy, but this is on the phone. On the phone, mainly, I would say, yeah, like text and call, but I wouldn't text at all. Number one, right? Ooh, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't text at all. Number one, right? So, um, like, I would call only, and then if they don't answer, I could shoot them a text, but I'm not going to ask them if they want to see the property on a text, right? I at see. all, okay, right? Um, 
So when I'm calling, right, what I'm going to say is, is, hey, Mr. Johnson, right? Hey, it's Cole over here at Remax and in whatever area, make sure you say the area so they know where you're at and stuff, right? You're going to say, hey, you, you know, are you enjoying the day? Isn't it gorgeous? Right? Or I'm enjoying the day. Cool, cool, cool. Say, listen, um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I saw that you were looking at this house online, whatever house they, they came in as lead at. I was just calling to kind of see what's going on there and see if there's something I could do to help you see what's going on. Right. And now we're listening. We're just listening. Like, see what he says, you know, and then based on what he says is that's going to dictate what our next move is. You know, you're not always trying to set appointments. Right. You're, you're never really trying to set appointments. What you're trying to do is, is see what they're trying to do so that you can you know, help them. See what I'm saying? Like, you got to understand the backstory of what's happening. Like, I see you were looking at this house online. I was just calling to follow up with that and see if there's something I could do to help. Tell me what's going on. That's exactly what you should say. That's exactly what you should say. And then when they say, you know, yeah, I was looking at it. We're thinking about doing a little something, something and this, that and the other. Then dig deeper. You know, OK, well, why? What, what's got you? You know, what's got you guys moving to wherever? Where are you now? You know, are you already working with an agent on this? When are you looking to buy? Just continue to ask and dig, 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 you know, until you've collected all the data you know, you need to paint that full picture to where then you can take a step back and say, OK, I know I know what our next move is, because it's not always to go look at a property. Maybe they're looking to buy in eight months. Right. So therefore, an appointment may or may not be the next move. If you have a really good connection, maybe you guys want to catch lunch next week, you know, or something mm. just just to just to meet, you know, knowing that you're not they're not going to do anything for eight months. It comes back to what I said in the very beginning that most agents take a prospect and they're looking at that prospect like they're a deal today. And then they're taking anything they say and saying, OK, how do I approach this in a way that basically turns this into a transaction today? Instead of listening to exactly what the con what the prospect wants to do and then just putting a game plan together to help them do it, regardless if it's to buy or sell today or not. See what I mean? I, I remember you saying that earlier, too. And, and I immediately I, I, I went in my head. I was like, that's exactly how I've been thinking, because, because I, I've just been so hungry for like the deal. You know, like I've just been exactly. so hungry. And people I, I, I got to be more patient. And, and people hear that in your voice. Yeah. When somebody says I want to buy or something. Right. Slow down for a second. Take a step back. Take a deep breath and say, OK, you want to buy? Let's figure this thing out together. I got you. Tell me. Tell me more. Tell me what's going on. Right. Tell me. Tell me your situation, because what's happening is, is you're 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 in this mindset to convert before you connect. Right. And we need to connect, then convert. Right. And we need to baby step that that, you know, the conversion, it needs to be baby stepped. And it's a process. It just doesn't go from A to Z. You know what I mean? There's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You know what I mean? Definitely. OK. Yeah. So just take them down that road with you. And taking them down that road shows them what? That you care. You know what I mean? It shows them that you care because you're asking questions. You're asking them the same questions you would ask your mom or dad. Right? Your mom or dad wanted to buy, buy something, right? Your dad called you today and said, I want to buy a house. What's the first thing you would ask them? At this point, so mainly, I mean, obviously I wouldn't go like right into the pre-approval. No, say, I'm saying like, okay. like your dad called right now. And said, and said, I'm looking to buy. What would what would your I want to buy this house over here? What's the first thing you'd say? I say, well, okay. So I first I asked what area and whatnot, and then they say, no, he's okay. tell he's telling you the house. He says, son, this is your dad, Cole. This is your dad calling. Okay, we don't have to treat him like a robot or a prospect, right? He tells you that here's the house. I want to buy this house. What is the next thing you do to you say? Pretty much, I'd, I'd mainly kind of like get pre qualified. At least, at least that's what I kind of initially. No, you wouldn't. In terms of Cole, your dad, you're going to go get your dad pre qualified? No, listen to me. Right. Listen to me, Cole. The first thing you would, you're, you, you've been so programmed by mainstream coaching. It's, it's, it's just, you can see it oozing, right? The first thing you would, you would ask your dad if he said, I want to buy this house. The first thing you would say to him naturally, organically is, why, dad? 
You'd say, you'd say, why you want to buy that house? Right? And and then he'd tell you. And you say, oh, okay, that makes sense. You want to invest it. You want it's a rental, it's going to be a rental property. That's a good move. Let's go look at it. I'll set it up. Go look at it. Right? He loves it. Okay, great. How you want to pay, how you want to pay for it? You want to make an offer? How do you want to pay for it? You know, what do you want to do? So definitely, bro. When a buyer says, I want to buy, do not say, let's get you pre-approved. Say, what house you want to go look at? Go show them houses without getting them pre-approved. I see. Okay. Because yeah. initially I thought it was reverse where it's like, you know, you want to make sure they're pre-approved before you show them houses. But then of I guess that's also you, probably of, more of, of, of course you do, Of course you do if you're a blood-sucking bat who just wants I to see. make money on people. Maybe they don't want to buy. They just want to look at the house. Can they just look at the house? You know what I mean? It comes back to why do you want to sell? Why do you want to buy? If they tell you I have to buy right now because my lease is up in 60 days and I got to put something under contract now, we're in a crunch. Okay, let's go straight to the bank and see exactly what you can get approved for. And then we'll go look at five houses in that range and get something under contract in the next two or three days. How's that sound? Great, great. I'll go to the bank with you. Let's go. Right? Like there are situations where you're going to go get them pre-approved. But I'm saying that's not every time. See, you're programmed to do it every time. You know, every situation is different, man. There's not a cookie cutter. Here's how you handle every prospect step by step. It doesn't work like that. Every every prospect has different time uh, time frames, motivations you know, uh, abilities, willingness. So you can't treat them all the same. Okay. You get mean. better at digging into their situations, right. And baby stepping into the connection, treating them like their mom or dad, and then helping them do what they want to do. Got it. Definitely. It, it's it's cool. definitely like another lens I really got to be seeing it through, you know, exactly, in terms of the man, more exactly. helping approach rather than. And this will executing. help you close way more deals, man, a lot quicker. Okay. Definitely. Cool, bro. Thank you, Ricky. Hey, keep crushing it, man. Definitely. I won't let you down. Uh, message me on Instagram. Like uh, say, hey, I was the guy that came on live with you. So I know who you are. I'll follow you. Oh, they, uh, that really means a lot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, up. Ricky. I will. I'll, I'll do it right now. So cool. See you, bud. Awesome. Thanks, Ricky. Later, Take man. care. Bye bye. That was pretty cool. Thanks for coming on, bro. I needed that. I needed a little. I needed to release release all that. It was all in there. All right, cool. I got to hop on a Zoom call, guys. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, if you guys need something, hit me on Instagram. I'll be back doing a live next Monday. I'm leaving Tuesday to go to Chicago. Love you guys. Let's go. Keep crushing it. Put a video right here. Put a video right here for you to continue watching. Love. Keep building, keep selling. Let's get it. I 35 with the top down. Quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Seem like everybody want to be the boss, but it costs and these lames ain't like me. Drop a couple.